So the NBA Draft Lottery happened on Tuesday night, and while my Bulls weren't able to get lucky with their picks, there were several other teams that had fantastic nights. The Detroit Pistons snagged the number one overall pick for the first time in 51 years when they selected Bob Lanier. The Raptors managed to jump into the top four after having the seventh best odds in the lottery, and Golden State managed to get two lottery picks at seven and 14. But if you're a Minnesota Timberwolves fan, you might want to skip this video. Let's dive right into my personal mock draft 2.0. Before getting into the mock, I just briefly wanted to explain how it was created. Basically, I'm going into this blind. I haven't looked at a single mock draft, and so there might be some discrepancy between the general media consensus and myself. That being said, I considered three things in determining where these players ended up. First, I considered my own personal big board rankings. Secondly, I considered what I think teams will do with their pick. And finally, I considered Team Fit. As we went down the list, Team Fit became increasingly more important. With that all established, here is Bobby Douglas's Mock Draft 2.0. With the first overall pick in the 2021 NBA Draft, the Detroit Pistons select Cade Cunningham. Detroit gets the grand prize in this year's draft, as Cunningham is a heliocentric offensive anchor that is molded from the same clay as some of the NBA's greatest playmakers. At number two, I have the Houston Rockets taking USC big man Evan Mobley. The Rockets find their franchise center who should anchor their defense for the next decade and who can also provide a versatile offensive skill set with an absolutely massive upside. At three, I have the Cleveland Cavaliers taking Jalen Green. Seemingly young and promising at every position, the Cavs decide to select Green, who might be considered the most talented player available at this stage and who showcased an NBA-level scoring acumen in the G League this past season. The days of Sexland could be numbered. At 4, the Toronto Raptors get lucky and select Jalen Suggs. With Kyle Lowry out the door most likely after free agency, the Raptors find their next franchise guard and select Suggs, whose athleticism, IQ, and toughness will fit right in north of the border. At 5, the Orlando Magic take Jonathan Kuminga. Orlando continues their habit of drafting for length and athleticism by taking the 6'8 swingman from the G League Ignite team. Kuminga's overall basketball skill definitely needs some refining, but his raw two-way potential makes him a very deserving pick here at 5. At 6, the Thunder select Florida State's Scotty Barnes. Barnes's unique point forward skills combined with his versatile defensive prowess make him a worthwhile investment for the Thunder, who can afford to wait on his shooting to come around given their state of the franchise. He also provides playmaking help next to Shea Gilgis Alexander in the meantime. At 7, the Golden State Warriors take Josh Giddy. Golden State will be intrigued by the Australian point guard's skills combined with his 6'8 frame. He can take some of the playmaking burden off of Steph Curry while providing solid positional defense as well. With their second first round pick, the Orlando Magic take James Booknight here at 8. The Magic add a smooth perimeter scorer to bolster their relatively unproven backcourt and Booknight just adds an electrifying bucket getting prospect that the team has seemed to lack over the last few seasons. At 9, the Kings take Franz Wagner. Gone are the days of drafting Giorgio's Papayanis for Sacramento, as they have drafted significantly smarter over the last few years. Wagner gives the Kings some much needed defensive awareness, and he should act as a plug and play wing with exquisite basketball intelligence. At 10, the New Orleans Pelicans take Baylor's Davion Mitchell. With Lonzo Ball hitting restricted free agency, the Pelicans take care of two needs at once by taking Mitchell, who offers significant speed at the guard position while also being the draft's best point of attack defender. The Charlotte Hornets take Kai Jones here at 11. Jones gives Rookie of the Year and former number one prospect on this channel, by the way, LaMelo Ball a legitimate lob threat and a rim protecting big. Jones has also shown real perimeter gracefulness offensively and high level switch ability defensively. At 12, the San Antonio Spurs take the Turkish big man Alperin Sengun. The 18 year old Turkish League MVP makes sense for the Spurs as he gives them a highly skilled traditional low post big man with great passing vision and a tough, fearless attitude. At 13, the Indiana Pacers take Duke forward Jalen Johnson. While Indiana usually likes drafting more NBA ready players, they make an exception here as Jalen Johnson falls to them in the late lottery. At 6'9", Johnson's transition playmaking and defensive versatility intrigues an athletically challenged Indiana team on the wings. To round out the lottery, at 14, the Golden State Warriors take sharp shooting wing Moses Moody. Moody is the definition of 3 and D, and is a smart pick for Golden State, who is looking to contend in the West again with a healthy Klay Thompson. In a win-now situation, Moody's strengths should find their way onto the court in big games. At 15, the Washington Wizards take Keon Johnson. 
swinging for upside here, Washington takes the hyper-athletic combo guard who recently posted a 48-inch vertical at the NBA Draft Combine. Johnson's Marcus Smart-like defensive skill package and overall physical tools are too good to pass up here at 15, and he should provide solid reserve minutes for Russell Westbrook and Bradley Beal while he refines his basketball skills. At 16, the Oklahoma City Thunder take Kentucky big man Isaiah Jackson. Jackson showed awesome shot blocking instincts while in Lexington, and his ability to play in small spaces and get 50-50 rebounds should make him an important culture setter for a rebuilding Thunder squad. I have the Grizzlies taking Zaire Williams here at 17. Memphis has done a really good job building their roster around Ja Morant, but they could get some more higher upside wings. Enter Stanford's Zaire Williams. At a smooth 6'8", Williams has shown real promise as a self-creator and shooter, while also having the frame to guard 1-3. through three. You hope that eventually his production matches his promise. With their final pick in the first round, the Thunder take Gonzaga's Corey Kispert at 18. Kispert's role seems pretty defined. He will be a knockdown shooter who can attack closeouts at times, while also providing solid defense in a variety of spots. But obviously, his main appeal is his three-point shooting ability. At 19, the New York Knicks take Auburn's Sharif Cooper. We all saw the limitations of Alfred Payton in the playoffs, so the Knicks should be thinking point guard here. Enter Sharif Cooper, who might be the draft's best overall passer. And while he's undersized and has questions to answer about his shot, his raw ability to make his teammates better should be enough for New York to pull the trigger here. The Atlanta Hawks take Tennessee guard Jaden Springer at 20. After most likely kicking themselves for passing on Tyrese Halliburton last year, the Hawks don't make the same mistake again, as they take the defensively solid Springer. Jaden Springer profiles as an off-ball guard who can provide some playmaking relief to Trey Young. Their second selection in three picks, the Knicks take another guard in Arizona State's Josh Christopher. Christopher had an up-and-down year in Tempe, but he did flash raw scoring ability throughout the season, which the Knicks should welcome as they were towards the bottom of the league in offensive rating among playoff teams. The Lakers take Oregon's Chris Duarte at 22. Despite recently turning 24 years old, Duarte gives the Lakers some perimeter shot making and switchable defense in an NBA ready body. He should contribute immediately for a team looking to get back into championship form. At 23, the Rockets take Florida guard Trey Mann. Having already addressed their front court, Houston looks to the guard position, where they take Trey Mann, who is lightning quick and has shown real proficiency at scoring from behind the arc and creating separation both on and off the ball. Second straight pick for the Rockets here, and they decide to keep Greg Brown in Texas. Brown's upside cannot be denied, as he is 6'10 and one of the most explosive leapers in this class. His energy on the glass and his defensive versatility should give him a strong baseline while his ball skills continue to develop in Houston. At 25, the Clippers take Usman Garuba. Garuba offers Los Angeles a more switchable big man defender in the mold of Bam Adebayo. Garuba's defensive instincts and quickness would allow the Clippers to put even more switchable lineups on the floor, which would be absolutely devastating for opposing offenses. Denver takes Trey Murphy from Virginia here at 26. Seen as an under-the-radar first-round prospect, Murphy gives Denver much-needed depth on the wing, which is something they lack this season after the loss of Jeremy Grant. Murphy will provide solid defense while also being able to hit spot-up three-pointers off Jokic dimes. Brooklyn takes North Carolina's Dayron Sharp at 27. The Nets need more depth down low, and while Nick Claxton has been promising in his time there, having another big man who can impact the game with his hustle and rebounding would help Brooklyn out a lot. At 28, Philadelphia takes LSU's Cam Thomas. Who even knows what Philadelphia's roster will look like come next season, but one thing they do desperately need is someone who can create his own shot on the perimeter. Enter Cam Thomas, who has never seen a shot he doesn't like. He does a great job getting to the free throw line and can really add a much needed aspect to the Sixers offense. At 29, the Phoenix Suns take Io DeSumo. It's hard to look at this current Phoenix Suns team and act like they need anything, so I have them taking Dasumu here as just another backcourt reinforcement who can maybe play some small forward in certain lineups. His playstyle meshes perfectly with how well Phoenix moves the ball, and he'll provide NBA level defense from day one. To round out the first round, Utah takes Michigan State's Aaron Henry. We saw Utah's lack of athleticism on the wings catch up with them against the Clippers, so I have them addressing that here by taking Henry, who is seen as one of the draft's most promising wing defenders. Ideally, he should help take pressure off of Rudy Gobert by offering the Jazz more options in terms of defensive schemes. And that officially wraps up my second official 2021 NBA mock draft. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all soon for more full game breakdowns. Oh, 
You guys are still here? All right, well, I'll give you one bonus pick then, too, for the second round. You actually couldn't think I'd make a whole mock draft video and not even give any thought as to who the Chicago Bulls should take at 38, right? Of course not. Okay, so with the 38th pick in the 2021 NBA draft, the Chicago Bulls better take Joel Ayayi, guard Gonzaga. And now I can end this video.